Hi, it's Corrine, and today I wanted to share with you this gorgeous digital paper collection. If you follow me for a while, you know that I love using digital papers, and I wanted to share this gorgeous collection from Knitwit Collections. I'll put a link down in the description box below, and I was so impressed with Knitwit. First of all, this paper collection, I got the bundled collection. It's called Ooh La La, and there were, um, I think, over 50 papers, different papers, not the same. So you get 50 different papers with it. And I got the element pack as well, and there were approximately about 150 elements that come with it. So I'll share some of these with you today. I'm using this for a mini album that I'm making, so hopefully I'll have that done within the next day or two and I'll be able to share the finished album with you. But this collection is gorgeous. And I like to use it with my Silhouette Cameo. You do not have to. You can purchase their collections and print them out and cut them out, which I tend to do as well. But I do want to share with you a Silhouette tutorial a little bit later in this video showing different things that you can do with it. But let me just share with you these papers. This is probably my favorite collection from them. They have so many gorgeous collections and I love, I've never seen um, a digital pack that you get so many papers. Usually when I purchase them you get usually anywhere from 7 to 12 papers, but like I said in this bundle collection there are, I want to say about 50 different papers. Look at those. And I don't have an excellent printer, I just use a Canon Pigsma 512. I think I paid about $100 for it a year or two ago, and the ink is not expensive. But like I was telling my husband, when I go buy paper pads, I usually buy, you know, 8x8 eight eight or 6x6 six six paper pads. Instead, I'm just going to buy some replacement ink and a few digital paper pads that I want because I get so many different um, results from it. And I'll share that with you in just a moment when I'm talking about So now these are going to be for pages that I'm making pockets, so I didn't need the full paper, so that's why I only cut out. And that's another thing I like about the silhouette. You only cut out what you need. But let me show you an example. Well, this here, this and this are the exact same paper. But in my Cameo, I just reversed the pattern to the side. And then I added one of their digital stamps to it. So that did not come on the paper, I put that. And then here's another example. I reversed the pattern. So I did the horizontal and then the vertical stripes and then I increased the scale on it by 200%. So it looks like a different pattern that you're getting but it's the exact same pattern. I did that. Here's another example. This is the exact same paper. Um, one is a darker color. Yeah, this one's a little bit darker, but I turn the scale up on this one to 200%. So it gives me a different look, much bigger flowers. And I like that as, and then this as well, I increase the scale up, which like I said, I'm gonna go over um, a few things on the Cameo to show you. This here is their Eiffel Tower. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to use that on the front of the album. And I also cut out several more, so I'm going to glue them together and that will give me a chipboard thickness. This here is a pocket that I made using a bracket style cut. And this is one of their tags. I just included the tag on it so, you, so it's one layer. Then I decided I did want it to stick up, so I just cut another one and put it on there or I will put it on there and that'll give me the um, a little bit of lift to it. So there's so much you can do with it. Again, made another pocket and I scaled the pattern down. They have just so many elements, like I said, about 150 and look at these like tags. Gorgeous. There's so much you can do with them. These I made larger because these are going to be going in a pocket, but you can make them tiny like little tags or tickets I should say. I called them tags but they're tickets. And then these were tiny and I made large because I most likely will be using these in a pocket. 
these are the same thing. However, one I cut out without the postage stamp edge and one with it. So it's just crazy what you can do with this. Here is a postcard, absolutely gorgeous. This is a paint swatch. So you can make it as large, as small as you want. Here's smaller tickets. This is a tag. And then I made a little pocket, a journaling pocket that I had. And again, I used one of their phrases and just added that to the front of the pocket. So you can customize these. I made a frame with a large ticket. And then I made an oval frame that I will back. And again, I added the digital paper to it. So I mean, everything's going to match perfectly in this album. There's also, this is one of the elements. It's a large lamp post. And um, I cut several more of them out so I can back it to make it very sturdy with chipboard. This is a different Eiffel Tower in pink. And then there are just tons. And this, there's so much more that I haven't done yet. I'm gonna wait till I am starting to get the album together before I do it. But I have little bows that I cut out and I use the exact same paper collection. I have little roses and I did small ones, large ones, medium. Here's some fleur de lis and again they have different colors. Some hearts. So this is going to be so much fun to put this album together. There is a little poodle and I did two more cuts to make it thicker. But look how cute that is. So to me it is so worth it. I, um, like I said, I bought ink just so I didn't worry about printing everything out. I didn't have to worry about using up my ink. Um, this is another one of the tickets, but look how tiny I made that. And I made a little piece for the back because my ink, my color ink was low. So I bought some more before I started printing a bunch of this out and I still have not run out. So, I mean, I did all of this and I did not use hardly any ink. This is also a beautiful cluster. I haven't taken out all the little pieces yet, but you can see. Just gorgeous, gorgeous. So let me show you a few things on the silhouette. And like I said, I'll put a link for Knitwit Collections down in the description box. I can tell you that I am going to be ordering a lot of their products. I'm so happy with them. You wouldn't believe it. Also, one last thing I want to show you real quick. When you print it out, I print it on normal, just plain. I use Georgia Pacific paper. It's a 110 pound weight cardstock. And I printed it out in normal, and I also printed it out in high resolution, and there is a little bit of a difference, as you can see. So my suggestion is print it out in high resolution. I did all of this in high resolution, and I'm really happy with the results. So let's get over to the silhouette, and I'll show you a few things. Okay, so I wanted to share with you on the silhouette some of the things that you can do when you purchase a collection. I do have another video where I show how to transfer collections into your Silhouette Studio. I will put a link in the description box below for that. And I'll also put a link for Knitwit Collections in the box below. So if you're interested, you can stop by there and check it out. But I just want to show you. So I have a file that is my Knitwit Collections. And look at all the different papers that you get. And none of them are the same. So there are 52 papers in this bundle collection and the elements, you get tons of elements, all different Eiffel Towers, Fleur de Lis, beautiful flowers, flower clusters, frames, hearts, all different um, patterns and colors, this beautiful lamp post, beautiful tags, all the numbers. The little poodles, little stamps. I love this postcard. I love all these po postage stamps and tickets. So um, just to go back and show you, as you can see, I've been working on this. I printed out all this. 
what I've been doing, let me just take this off here, is picking out different pattern papers that I want to use. So here's a good example. I will zoom in so you can see a little bit better. So this pattern paper right here, and I have all my elements in here and all the papers. So this one here, you can go down under advanced options and it's currently at 100%. You can scale the pattern. Let me zoom in even a little bit more. You can scale the pattern up to whatever you want. So that's 237, 319. So let's say we scale it down to around 200. You can also pan the pattern. So you want to click on that, grab this little tool in the middle, and move it around. So if there's a certain part of the pattern that you want, you can do that. That's why I like using digital papers, because you could do two of the same papers, but they end up looking totally different. You can also rotate the pattern, whatever you want to do. So let me grab another one and show you here. What I did for the cover is I used a similar pattern to this one here. It was scaled down to the normal 100%. And let me get it back to patterns. And now what I did is I wanted it to go on the left side of my paper like this, but normally that's how this paper is. So as you can see, it ends up looking like a completely different paper. And again, I can scale it up if I wanted to, pan it around, whatever you want to do. So I could have it look like this if I wanted to. And again, that gives me a completely different look than the other paper. So another thing is all the elements that come in there, super simple to work with. If you want to cut this out or have the Cameo cut this out, I've already traced it. Let me undo it to show you. It does not come already to cut out, but it's super, super simple to cut it out. So go up here to your top under open the trace window, select trace area, and just draw a bounding box around it. Let me move this out of the way. And now you want to uncheck the high pass filter. It's trying to catch up with me here. And then under the threshold, turn that all the way up to 100%. And as you can see, we have a beautiful trace. If it's grainy or not fully yellow, you're going to get a really bad trace. So if it's like that, that's going to be a horrible trace. You want to just move it all the way up. You can actually move it down a little bit if you want it to cut out that heart in the middle. But I want to leave it on there. So I'm moving it all the way up to 100%, and I'm going to select Trace. Now, when I move it sideways, let me zoom in a little. When I move it sideways, you can see I have a perfect trace for this. So what I will do is grab both of these. Since I moved it, you don't have to move it, but I was moving it to show you. I'm going to, under my Align window, I'm going to cl uh, click on Center. And now I'm going down here to the left and selecting Group. And now I can print and cut this. So I can print it out first and cut it. And that's what I showed you earlier in the video when I showed you the Eiffel Tower on there. So that is just one of the many reasons I like using digital papers. Um, I can use a postcard and make it as small as I want, as large as I want for whatever project. And I can tell you I will be using this paper collection a lot. It's one of my absolute favorites of all time. So if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Thanks so much for watching.